the third tablet. The fate of Nibiru is in my hands, to my conditions you must give heed. Those were the words of Alalu, from dark-hued earth to Nibiru they were by the speaker beamed. When the words of Alalu to Anu, the king, were conveyed, Anu astounded was. Astounded were the counselors, amazed were the sages. Alalu is not dead? They each other asked. Could indeed he on another world be living? They with disbelief were saying. Was he not on Nibiru hiding, in the chariot to a place of concealment gone? The commanders of chariots were summoned, savants the beamed words considered. The words from Nibiru did not come. From beyond the hammered bracelet were they spoken, this was their finding, this to Anu the king they reported. Stunned was Anu, the happening he pondered. Let words of acknowledgement to Alalu be sent, to the assembled he was saying. At the place of the celestial chariots the command was given, to Alalu words were spoken, Anu, the king, to you his greeting sends, of your well-being to learn he is pleased. For your departing from Nibiru there was no reason, enmity is not in Anu's heart. If gold for salvation you have indeed discovered, let Nibiru be saved. The words of Anu Alalu's chariot did reach. Alalu them quickly answered, If your savior I am to be, your lives to save, convene the princes to assembly, my ancestry declare supreme. Let the commanders make me their leader, bow to my command. Let the council pronounce me king, on the throne anew to replace. When the words of Alalu on Nibiru were heard, great was the consternation. How could Anu be deposed? The counselors asked each other. What if Alalu mischief, not truth, is telling? Where is his asylum? Did gold indeed he find? They summoned the sages, of the wise and learned counseling they asked. The oldest of them spoke. I was Alalu's master. He was saying. He had hearkened to teachings of the beginning, of the celestial battle he was learning, of the watery monster Tiamat and her golden veins he knowledge acquired. If indeed beyond the hammered bracelet he had journeyed, on earth, the seventh planet, is his asylum. In the assembly a prince spoke up. A son of Anu he was, of the womb of Antu, Anu's spouse, he was the issue. Enlil was his name, lord of the command it meant. Words of caution he was saying, of conditions Alalu cannot speak. Calamities were his handiwork, by single combat in wrestling he the throne forfeited. If Tiamat's gold he indeed had found, proof of that is needed, is it for protecting our atmosphere sufficient? How through the hammered bracelet to Nibiru can it be brought? Thus did Enlil, the son of Anu, speak, others many questions also asked. Much proof was greatly needed, many answers are required, all agreed. The words of the assembly to Alalu were conveyed, a response demanded. Alalu the words merit pondered, to transmit his secrets he agreed, of his journey and its perils in truth he an account gave. Of the tester its crystal innards he removed, from the sampler its crystal heart he took out. Into the speaker he the crystals inserted, all the findings to transmit. Now that proof has been delivered, declare me king, bow to my command. He sternly demanded. The sages were aghast. With weapons of terror Alalu on Nibiru more havoc caused. With weapons of terror a path through the bracelet he blasted. Once in its circuit Nibiru that region passes, calamities Alalu as amassing. In the council there was much consternation. The kingship to alter was indeed a grave matter. Anu not by ancestry alone was king. By fair wrestling the throne he attained. In the assembly of the princes, a son of Anu stood up to speak. He was wise in all matters, among the sages renowned he was. Of the secrets of waters he was a master, 
EA, he whose home is water, he was called. Of Anu he was the firstborn, to Damkina, Alalu's daughter, he was espoused. My father by birth is Anu the king, Ea was saying, Alalu by marriage my father is. To bring the two clans into unison was my espousal's intention, let me be the one in this conflict unity to bring. Let me Anu's emissary to Alalu be, let me be the one Alalu's discoveries to uphold. Let me in a chariot to earth journey, a path through the bracelet with water, not fire, I shall fashion. On earth, from the waters let me the precious gold obtain, to Nibiru back it will be sent. Let Alalu be king on earth, a verdict of the sages awaiting. If Nibiru it will save, let there be a second wrestling. Who shall Nibiru rule let it determine. The princes, the counselors, the sages, the commanders heard Aya's words with wonder. Full of wisdom they were, for conflict they solution found. Let it so be, Anu announced. Let Aya journey, let the gold be tested. Alalu a second time I shall then wrestle, let the winner be on Nibiru king. The words of decision to Alalu were conveyed. He pondered them and agreed. Let Aya, my son by marriage, to earth come. Let gold from the waters be obtained, let it for salvation on Nibiru be tested, let a second wrestling kingship by me or Anu settle. So be it, Anu in the assembly decreed. Enlil rose in objection, the king's word unalterable was. Aya to the place of the chariots went, commanders and sages he consulted. The mission's dangers he contemplated, how to extract and bring the gold he considered. Alalu's transmission he carefully studied, Alalu for more testings the results he requested. A tablet of destinies for the mission he was fashioning. If water be the force, where could it be replenished? Where on the chariot will it be stored? How to force will it be converted? A full circuit of Nibiru did pass in contemplations, a shar of Nibiru in preparations passed. The largest celestial chariot for the mission has been fitted, its circuit's destiny has been calculated, a tablet of destiny has been firmly fixed. Fifty heroes will for the mission be required to journey to earth the gold to obtain. To the journey anew his approval gave, the stargazers for the journey the right time to begin then selected. At the place of the chariots multitudes gathered, to bid farewell to the heroes and their leader did they come. Bearing eagles' helmets, carrying each a fish's suit, the heroes the chariot one by one entered. The last to embark was Aya, to the gathering he bade farewell. Before his father Anu he knelt down, the king's blessing to receive. My son, the firstborn, a far journey you have undertaken, for us all to be endangered. Let your success calamity from Nibiru banish, go and in safety come back. So did Anu to his son speak a blessing, bidding him farewell. The mother of Ea, the one called Ninil, to her heart embraced him. Why, after by Anu as a son to me you were given, did he with a restless heart you endow? Go and come back, the hazardous road traverse safely. To him she said, with tenderness Aya kissed his spouse, Damkina he without words embraced. And Lil with his half-brother locked arms. Be blessed, be successful. To him he said. With heavy heart Aya the chariot entered, to soar up the command he gave. Now this is the account of the journey to the seventh planet, and how the legend of the fish god who came from the waters was begun. With heavy heart Aya the chariot entered, to soar up the command he gave. The commander's seat by Anzu, not by Aya, was occupied. Anzu, not Aya was the chariot's commander. He who knows the heavens his name's meaning was, for the task he was especially selected. 
A prince among the princes he was, of royal seed his ancestry he counted. The celestial chariot he deftly guided. From the biru it powerfully soared, toward the distant sun he it directed. Ten leagues, a hundred leagues the chariot was coursing, a thousand leagues the chariot was journeying. Little Gaga came out to greet them, a welcome to the heroes it was extending. To blue-hued Antu, the beautiful enchantress, it showed the way. By her sight Anzu was attracted. Let us examine her waters. Anzu was saying. Aya to continue without stopping gave the word. It is a planet of no return, he forcefully said. Toward the heavenly un, the third in planetary counts, the chariot continued. On his side was an lying, his host of moons about him were whirling. The tester's beams the presence of water was revealing. A stop if needed to Aya it was indicating. To continue the journey was Aya saying, toward Anshar, the heaven's foremost prince, he was directing. Soon the ensnaring pull of Anshar they could tell, his colored rings with fear they admired. Deftly did Anzu the chariot guide, the crushing dangers he cleverly avoided. The giant Kishar, foremost of firm planets, was next to be encountered. Her net's pull was overpowering, with great skill did Anzu the chariot's course divert. With fury Kishar at the chariot divine lightnings was thrusting, her host at the uninvited she directed. Slowly Kishar moved away, for the chariot the next enemy to encounter. Beyond the fifth planet the hammered bracelet was lurking. Aya his handiwork to set a whirring commanded, the water thruster to prepare. Toward the host of turning boulders the chariot was rushing, each one like a slingshot stone ferociously at the chariot aimed. The word by Aya was given, with the force of a thousand heroes the stream of water was thrust. One by one the boulders turned face, a path for the chariot they were making. But as one boulder fled, another in its stead was attacking. A multitude beyond count was their number, a host for the splitting of Tiamat revenge seeking. Again and again Aya the commands gave, the water thruster to keep a whirring. Again and again toward the host of boulders streams of water were directed. Again and again the boulders their faces turned, a path for the chariot making. And then at last the path was clear, unharmed the chariot could continue. A cry of joy the heroes sounded. Double was the joy as the sight of the sun was now unveiled. Amidst the elation Anzu the alarm sounded. For the path to have fashioned, excessive waters were consumed, waters to feed the chariot's fiery stones for the remaining journey were not sufficient. In the dark deepness the sixth planet they could see, the sun's rays it was reflecting. There is water on Lamu, Aya was saying. Can you bring the chariot down upon it? Anzu he was asking. Deftly Anzu the chariot toward Lamu directed, reaching the celestial god, around it he the chariot made circle. The planet's net is not great, its pull is to handle easy, Anzu was saying. A sight to behold was Lamu, many hued it was. Snow white was its cap, snow white were its sandals. Reddish hued was its middle, in its midst lakes and rivers were a glitter. Deftly Anzu the chariot made travel slower, by a lakeside it gently came down. Aya and Anzu their eagle's helmets donned, to the firm ground they stepped down. On command the heroes that which water sucks extended, the chariot's bowels with the lake's waters to fill. While the chariot was getting its fill of waters, Aya and Anzu the whereabouts examined. With tester and sampler all that matters they ascertained, the waters were good for drinking, the air was insufficient. All was in the chariot's annals recorded, the need for the detour described. With its vigor replenished the chariot soared up, to benevolent Lamu farewell bidding.
Beyond the seventh planet was making its circuit, Earth and its companion the chariot were inviting. In the commander's seat Anzu was without words, Aya too was silent. Ahead was their destination, its gold Nibiru's fate for salvation or doom containing. The chariot must be slowed or in Earth's thick atmosphere it shall perish. Anzu to Aya declared, around Earth's companion, the moon, make slowing circles. Aya to him suggested, they circled the moon, by the vanquishing Nibiru in the celestial battle it prostrate and scarred was lying. Having the chariot thus slowed down, toward the seventh planet Anzu the chariot directed. Once, twice the Earth's globe he made the chariot circle, ever closer to the firm land he lowered it. Snow-hued was two-thirds of the planet, dark-hued was its middle. They could see the oceans, they could see the firm lands, for the signal beacon from Alalu they were searching. Where an ocean touched dry land, where four rivers were swallowed by marshes, Alalu's signal was beaconed. Too heavy and large the chariot is for the marshes. Anzu was declaring, the earth's pulling net, too powerful for on dry land to descend it is. Anzu to Aya announced, splash down, splash down in the ocean's waters. Aya to Anzu shouted, around the planet Anzu made one more circuit, the chariot with much care toward the ocean's edge he lowered. The chariot's lungs he filled with air, into the waters down it splashed, into the depths it was not sinking. From the speaker a voice was heard, to earth be welcomed. Alalu was saying, by his beamed words the direction of his whereabouts was determined. Toward the place Anzu the chariot directed, floating as a boat it was upon the waters moving. Soon the wide-ranging ocean narrowed, dry land on both sides as Guardian appeared. On the left side brown-hued hills were rising, on the right mountains to heaven their heads raised. Toward the place of Alalu was the chariot moving, floating like a boat upon the waters it was. Ahead the dry land was covered with flooding, marshes the ocean were replacing. Anzu to heroes commands uttered, their fishes suits to put on he ordered. A hatch of the chariot was then opened, into the marshes the heroes descended. Strong ropes to the chariot they attached, with the ropes the chariot they were pulling. Alalu's beamed words more powerful were becoming. Hurry, hurry, he was saying. At the edge of the marshes, a sight there was to behold. Gleaming in the sunrays was a chariot from Nibiru, Alalu's celestial boat it was. The heroes their paces quickened, toward Alalu's chariot they hurried. Impatient, Aya donned his fish's suit, within his chest his heart was like a drum beating. Into the marsh he jumped, toward its edge hurried steps he directed. High were the marshes flooding, deeper was the bottom than he expected. He changed his gait to swimming, with bold strokes forward he advanced. As dry land he was approaching, green meadows he could see. Then his feet touched firm ground, he stood up and by walking he continued. Ahead he could see a Lalu standing, with his hands with vigor waving. Coming out of the waters, ashore Aya stepped, on dark-hued earth he was standing. Alalu toward him came running, his son by marriage he powerfully embraced. Welcome to a different planet, Alalu to Aya said. Now this is the account of how Eridu on earth was established, how the count of seven days was begun. In silence did Alalu Aya embrace, with tears of joy his eyes were filled. Before him Aya bowed his head, Respect for his father by marriage he was showing. In the marshes the heroes were advancing. More donned fishes suits, more toward the dry land were rushing. Keep the chariot afloat. Anzu was commanding. In the waters anchor it, the mud ahead avoiding. Ashore stepped the heroes, before Alalu they were bowing. 
Ashore came Anzu, the last the chariot to depart. Before Alalu he bowed, with him Alalu in welcome locked arms. To all who had arrived Alalu words of welcome spoke. To all who were assembled, Aya words of command spoke. Here on earth I am the commander. He was saying, on a life or death mission we have come, in our hands as Nibiru's fate. He looked about, for a place for encampment he was searching. Heap up soil, mounds fashion there. Aya gave command, an encampment to set up. To a place not afar he was pointing, a reed hut abode by Alalu erected. To Anzu then words he directed, to Nibiru words by beaming deliver, to the king my father, a new, successful arrival announce. Soon the hue of the skies was changing, from brightness to reddish it was turning. A sight never seen before their eyes was unfolding. The sun, as a red ball, on the horizon was disappearing. Fear seized the heroes, of a great calamity afraid they were. Alalu with laughter words of comfort was saying, A setting of the sun it is, the ending of one day on earth it is marking. For a quick rest lie down, a night on earth is beyond imagining short. Before you expect the sun will an appearance make, on earth it will be morning. Before expecting, darkness came, the heavens from the earth it separated. Lightnings the darkness pierced, rains the thunders followed. By winds were the waters blown, storms of an alien god they were. In the chariot the heroes hunkered down, in the chariot the heroes huddled. Resting to them did not come, they were greatly agitated. With quickened hearts the sun's return they awaited. Smiling when its rays appeared they were, joyful and backslapping. And it was evening and it was morning, their first day on earth it was. By daybreak Aya the ongoings considered, to separate waters from waters heed he was giving. Angor he made of the sweet waters the master, drinking waters to provide. To the snake pond with Alalu he went, its sweet waters to consider, evil serpents in the pond were swarming. So did Angor to Aya say. The marshlands Aya then contemplated, the abundance of rainwaters he weighed. In Bailulu he placed in charge of the marshlands, to mark out the thicket of reeds him he directed. In Kimdu in charge of ditch and dike he placed, a boundary for the marshes to fashion, for the waters that from heaven rain a gathering place to make. Thus were the waters below from the waters above separated, marsh waters from sweet waters asunder were set. And it was evening and it was morning, the second day on earth it was. When the sun morning announced, the heroes their assigned tasks were performing. With Alalu Aya to the place of grass and trees his steps directed, all that in the orchard grows, herbs and fruits after their kind to examine. To Asimid, his vizier, Aya questions was addressing, What is this plant? What is that plant? Him he was asking, a semid, one of much learning, food that grows well he could distinguish, he tore a fruit for Aya, a honey plant it is. To Aya he was saying, one fruit he himself ate, one fruit Aya was eating. Of food that grows, by its good distinguished, Aya the hero guru put in charge. Thus were the hero's water and food provided, satiated they were not. And it was evening and it was morning, the third day on earth it was. On the fourth day the wind ceased blowing, the chariot by waves was not disturbed. Let tools from the chariot be brought, let abodes in the encampment be built. Aya thus commanded, Kulla in charge of mold and brick Aya appointed, from the clay bricks to fashion, Mushdamu to lay foundations he directed, dwelling abodes to erect. All day the sun was shining, the great light by day it was. By eve time Kingu, earth's moon, in fullness a pale light on earth it cast, 
a lesser light to rule the night, among the celestial gods accounted to be. And it was evening and it was morning, the fourth day on earth it was. On the fifth day a a Ningersig a boat of reeds to fashion commanded, the measure of the marshes to take, the stretch of the swamplands to consider. Olmash, he who what in the waters swarms knows, who of fowl that fly has understanding, Olmash as a companion Aya took, between good and bad to distinguish. Kinds that in the waters swarm, kinds that in the skies give wing, to Olmash many were unknown. Bewildering was their number. Good were the carp, among the bad they were swimming. In Bailulu, the marshland's master, Aya summoned, in Kimdu, in charge of ditch and dike, Aya summoned. To them he gave words, in the marshlands to make a barrier, with cane breaks and green reeds an enclosure to fashion, fish from fish there separate, a trap for carp that from a net could not escape, a place whose snare no bird that is good for food could escape. Thus were fish and fowl, by their good kind separated, for the heroes provided. And it was evening and it was morning, the fifth day on earth it was. On the sixth day Aya of the orchard's creatures took account. Enyorsak to the task he assigned, that which creeps and that which on feet walks to distinguish. Their kinds Enyorsak astounded, of the ferocity of their wildness to Aya an account he gave. Aya Kulla summoned, to Mushdemu urgent commands he gave, by eve time the abodes to be completed, by a fence for protection to be surrounded. The heroes to the task put their shoulders, bricks on the foundations were quickly laid. With reeds were the roofings made, of cut down trees was the fencing put up. Anzu a beam that kills from the chariot brought over, a speaker that words beams at Aya's abode he set up, by eve time, complete was the encampment. For the night therein the heroes gathered. Aya and Alalu and Anzu the doings considered, all that was done indeed was good. And it was evening and it was morning, the sixth day. On the seventh day the heroes in the encampment were assembled, to them Aya spoke these words, a hazardous journey we have undertaken, from Nibiru to the seventh planet a dangerous way we traversed. At earth we with success arrived, much good we attained, an encampment we established. Let this day be a day of rest, the seventh day hereafter a day of resting always to be. Let this place henceforth by the name Eridu be called, home in the faraway the meaning thereof will be. Let a promise be kept, let Alalu of Eridu the commander be declared. The heroes thus assembled, in unison agreements shouted. Words of consent Alalu uttered, then homage to Aya he greatly paid. Let Aya a second name be given, Nudimud, the artful fashioner, let him be called. In unison the heroes' agreement announced. And it was evening and it was morning, the seventh day. Now this is the account of how the searching for gold was begun, and how the plans on Nibiru made to Nibiru salvation did not provide. After the encampment of Eridu was established and the heroes with food were satiated, Aya the task of gold from the waters obtaining started. In the chariot the firestones were stirred up, its great cracker was enlivened. That which water sucks from the chariot was extended, into the marsh waters it was inserted. Into a vessel of crystals the waters were directed, from the waters the crystals all that is metal in the vessel extracted. Then from the vessel that which spits out the waters to the fish pond spat out. Thus were the metals that were in the waters in the vessel collected. Ingenious was Aya's handiwork, an artful fashioner indeed he was. For six earth days marsh waters were sucked in, marsh waters were spat out, in the vessel metals indeed were collected. The metals on the seventh day by Aya and Alalu were examined, of many kinds were the metals in the vessel. 
iron there was, much copper there was, of gold there was no abundance. In the chariot another vessel, the artful handiwork of Nudimud, the metals after their kinds were separated, ashore kind by kind they were carried. For six days thus did the heroes toil, on the seventh day they rested. For six days were the crystal vessels filled and emptied, on the seventh day were the metals accounted. There was iron and there was copper, and other metals too. Of the gold, the smallest pile was accumulated. In the night times the moon waxed and waned, by the name month did Ea its circuit call. At month's very start, its luminous horn six days signified, by its half crown the seventh day it announced, a day to rest it was. At midway by a fullness was the moon distinguished, then it paused to become diminished. With the sun's course was the moon's circuit appearing, with earth's circuit it was its face revealing. Fascinated by the moon's motions was Ea, its attachment as Kingu to Ki he contemplated. What purpose did the attachment serve, what heavenly sign was it giving? A month did Ea the moon circuit call, month to its circuit he gave the name. For one month, for two months, in the chariot were the waters separated. The sun, every six months, to earth another season gave. Winter and summer did Ea by names them call. There was winter and there was summer, by year of earth did Ea the full circuit call. By year's end of the accumulated gold account was taken, much to dispatch to Nibiru there was not. The swampland's waters are deficient, let the chariot to the deeper ocean be moved. So was Ea saying. From its moorings was the chariot untied, back whence it came it was shifted. With great care were the crystal vessels stirred up, the saltwaters through them passing. Metals by their kinds were separated, gold among them was sparkling. From the chariot of the happenings Ea to Nibiru word did beam, anew to hear it was pleased indeed. In its destined circuit Nibiru to the sun's abode was returning, a closeness to earth on its shar circuit was Nibiru attaining. With eagerness did anew about the gold inquire. Is there enough for sending to Nibiru? He was asking. Alas, not enough was of the gold from the waters collected. Let another shar pass, let the quantity be doubled. Ea to anew counseled. From the ocean's waters the obtaining of gold continued, in his heart Ea with apprehension was filling. From the chariot parts were hauled out, a sky chamber from them was assembled. Abgul, he who knows piloting, of the sky chamber to take charge he appointed. Daily in the sky chamber with Abgul did Ea upward soar, the earth and its secrets to learn. For the sky chamber an enclosure was constructed, by Alalu's chariot was it placed. Daily the crystals in Alalu's chariot did Ea study, what by their beams was discovered to understand. Whence does the gold come? He asked Alalu, where on earth are Tiamat's golden veins? In the sky chamber with Abgul did Ea upward soar, the earth and its secrets to learn. Over great mountains they roamed, in the valleys great rivers they saw. Steps and forests below were stretched, thousands of leagues was their reach. Vast land separated by oceans they recorded, with the beam that scans the soils they penetrated. On Nibiru impatience was growing. Can gold protection provide? Was the outcry increasing. Assemble the gold, on Nibiru's nearing gold you must deliver. So did a new Ea command. Repair Alalu's chariot, for returning to Nibiru make it fit, for the Shar's completion make it ready. So was a new saying. Ea his father's, the king, words was heeding. The repairing of Alalu's chariot he was contemplating. As the sky chamber one eve by the side of the chariot they landed, with Abgul the chariot they entered, a secret deed in the darkness to perform. The weapons of terror, the seven of them, from the chariot they removed. 
To the sky chamber they took them, inside the sky chamber them to give hiding. By sunrise Aya with Abgal in the sky chamber soared, to another land was their direction. There, in a secret place, did Aya the weapons hide. In a cave, a place unknown, he stored them. Then to Anzu Aya words of command gave, to repair Alalu's chariot he him directed, for returning to Nibiru to make it fit, by the Shah's completion to make it ready. Anzu, in the ways of chariots greatly skilled, to the task his labor set, he made its thrusters hum again, its tablets he carefully considered, the absence of the weapons of terror he soon discovered. With anger Anzu cried out, Aya of their hiding away gave the explanation, forsworn as the weapon's use. Aya was saying, neither in the heavens nor on firm lands shall they ever be harnessed. Without them no passage through the hammered bracelet is safe. Anzu was saying, without them, without water thrusters, the danger is endurance surpassing. Alalu, of Eridu the commander, the words of Aya considered, to the words of Anzu heed he gave, the words of Aya by the council of Nibiru are attested. Alalu was saying, but without the chariot's return, Nibiru shall be doomed. Abgal, he who knows piloting, boldly toward the leaders stepped forward. I shall be the pilot, the dangers I shall valiantly face. He was saying, thus was the decision made, Abgal shall be the pilot, Anzu on earth shall be staying. On Nibiru, the stargazers the destinies of the celestial gods contemplated, an opportune day they were selecting. Into Alalu's chariot basketfuls of gold were carried. The forepart of the chariot Abgal entered, the commander's seat he occupied. From the chariot of Aya, to him Aya a tablet of destiny gave. It shall be that which shows the way for you, by it the opened pathway you shall find. The chariot's firestones Abgal stirred up. Their hum-like music was enthralling. The chariot's great cracker he enlivened, a reddish brilliance it was casting. Aya and Alalu the multitude of heroes were standing around, farewell to him they were bidding. Then the chariot with a roar heavenward rose, to the heavens it ascended. To Nibiru words of the ascent were beamed, on Nibiru there was much expecting, 